obviously everything looks a thousand times better than what you had the first pitch. But unfortunately, that goes, like I said, it goes back to the back to the kind of the pitch phase where he's got the storyboards, he's got the the concept art, he's got the plan, he's got the metrics, he's got everything to show them. He's just waiting for the right people to say yes. And right now, the right people are the, the bosses, the people that would approve it, and their bosses are now also in this meeting. So it's not just up to Anne, it's not just up to Toby, it's not just up to Walter, it's up to their bosses too. So for my financial state, AT&T is now getting involved. So big win right there. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of some of the other details that I've been told, is part of the pitch is going to include some cost cutting and budgetary conversations on how they can actually make these projects work financially without compromising the artistic integrity. One of the things I was told was that they're actually pitching the use of the same tech they used to make the Mandalorian, the massive uh, green screen sets that they're going to be talking about using those to make sure that they can do everything spot on, but also cut costs dramatically. Um, I, one thing I want to ask, I want to clear this with you before I even talk about it. Okay. Let's, uh, yes or no? Are we getting yeah. in trouble for saying this? No. Well, yeah, no, you can, yeah, you can talk. Okay. It. Yeah. All right. Some people will be upset about this, but I'm, I don't care at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Justice League two and three is no longer being pitched as movies. It's being pitched as a straight up miniseries. They're talking about the initial idea what, that we have with Jack Snyder's Justice League, the six chapters, but do that as episodes for the forthcoming projects. And they talked about everything. They're, they're kind of blanketing this whole conversation together. They say they can do Justice League 2, they can do Justice League 3, they can do Batfleck, they can do Cyborg, they can do... They're kind of pitching everything and showing projections of what that success would look like. So they are going full on with this is what we're going to do. And they have metrics, they have statistics, they have budgetary projections. They've got, they've done their homework. So, yep. All is not lost. The fandom is not, uh, is not over. San, uh, Ansarnoff's comments about saying this is one and done. That's not at all what's happening. Um, from WB standpoint, yeah, WB is not making any films, but they're not talking about films. At this point, HBO is talking about essentially a Game of Thrones replacement, doing that in the form of the Snyderverse. It was real. It will be coming out after James Gunn, the Suicide Squad movie, obviously. So, what is good, YouTube? How you doing? Let us know down below. Check us out on Instagram at WarStu if you want to see the face behind the voice. Also, check us out on Twitter at WarStuG. So, restore said Snyderverse. So, since the Zack Snyder Justice League movie came out a while ago now, restore the Snyderverse, Zack Snyder Justice League, Snyder Cut, it's literally been trending everywhere. So, let's get into this video. So, we're going to go over more information that's come out or hasn't come out behind the scenes. Just let you guys know that chill, 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 chill. The Snyderverse will be restored in some capacity. So recently, there's been some little super duper 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 Twitter scoopers from unreliable websites talking about things like The Rock to save the DCEU. No, this is kind of really old news, like really, really old news. E ever since The Rock wanted to make the Black Adam movie, he's wanted Henry Cavill Superman to appear in said movie. So I don't get why these little websites are trying to run this like a brand new scoop. The Rock, Dwayne Johnson is the super duper savior of the DCEU Snyderverse. No, he isn't. He's he supported the Snyderverse forever because Henry Cavill's got the same manager as The Rock, Danny Garcia, and it, he commissioned fan art from Boss Logic of Henry Cavill's Superman destroying Black Adam. I wonder why he did. There's so much evidence The Rock wants Henry Cavill in his movie. He literally said it at DC Fandom, there's a new hierarchy coming. And he's essentially take, talking about he's going to be the most powerful person in this universe and he'd essentially have to take out Superman to be said power and also there's some publications and okay publications has been a bit too nice some little websites making out that jared leto or leto i guess it depends how you say it, is now supporting snyder he's always supported it from day one that's old news i really hate it when these little websites these little twitter super duper freaker scoopers make out old news is new news by bringing up old stories that other people have said and they bring up as new information it really is you know like these articles going around that the dcu is oh, gonna change hands it's gonna be re 
reboot it after the Flash movie. How, I mean, technically the Flashpoint movie does reboot the DCEU in, in the comics and animation. I guess it does reboot it because they go from a parallel universe into something new post when Nora Allen dies, so to speak, the hands of Ebar Thorne. I don't expect anything to change after the Flash. I expect to be a multiverse with the Hamadaverse, the Snyderverse to coexist on HBO Max. So let's go into today's information. So guys, the Anne Cernoff article, just discredit everything she said, in my opinion. Discredit everything she said. That was a fluff piece. It was wrote before the numbers came out. They didn't know how well it was going to do. It was a Cody Zack, Cody Zack, Cody Zack. Now what's interesting is Zack Snyder himself introduced some of the new gods in his movie. Granny Goodness, Disar, etc. And then we get the news on April's full day that all of a sudden the new gods movie has been, yeah, it's been scrapped. And then on the very same day, Zack Snyder drops an image of Granny Goodness. Is he winking behind the camera like James Gunn was winking when Jane Gunn answered the question about the David version on the Suicide Squad cut where someone asked, yo, James, is it more likely that his version could come out after yours? And he was like, yeah, I think so. Subliminal messages. So the Snyderverse isn't going anywhere. And I really don't understand why people seem to think it is going somewhere. Have you not seen the metrics? The metrics. 1.5 million tweets in a day. Interesting. The amount of repay value. The Justice is graded pretty well. Now, it does look like Warner Brothers is trying to suppress the information because it's a bit interesting how the documentary came out. We got the numbers instantly, but for some reason, the Zack Snyder Justice League movie on HBO Max, at least, they're trying to suppress the numbers. They don't. Warner Brothers doesn't want the real numbers to come out because the real numbers are actually really high. I'm not saying they're going to be groundbreaking and it's going to be the biggest thing ever, but ever since the Zack Snyder Justice League movie has come out, the numbers have been crazy big and some people are now trying to push this narrative and don't get me wrong, I freaking love Godzilla vs. Kong. We cover we're probably one of the YouTube channels that covered Godzilla vs. Kong the most. In some ways, I absolutely love the MonsterVerse, but I don't think numbers are going astronomical on HBO Max, and now they're revealing numbers just because Godzilla vs. Kong came out. That is ridiculous. It's all to do with the Zack Snyder Justice League. It really is. So let's go over some information that I've been told. Let's spill some tea and information that I've found out about what is going on with the Snyderverse. So the Snyderverse, from what I understand, I understand, is it will coexist on HBO Max only. It will have absolutely nothing to do with whatever DC Films is doing and certain off Toby Emmerich and Walter Hamada. But obviously, because it's all kind of one organization as a total, it kind of will in a roundabout way. But from what we understand, Justice League 2 and 3 will be coming to HBO Max, kind of Game of Thrones style on a series, because originally it was supposed to be a six-part series on HBO Max for the Zack Snyder Justice League, which pretty much should have been better. And I still feel it should have been done that way. So from what we understand, Justice League 2 and 3, for now, will be like a Game of Thrones series where you get people engaged every week or whenever the next episode comes out instead of dropping a massive movie in one go, which I guess I would be throwing ways. But either way, TV show series style, movie style, it doesn't matter. The Snyderverse will be restored. It really will. Now, from what we understand, there is huge meetings either going on or just about to go on in the next few weeks between everyone. They've got all the metrics. They've got all the data. They've got all the information they need. And we are also hearing that they will be talking everything in these meetings, which it won't be one. It'll be multiple meetings about budgets, about timelines, about what they can do. Because even say this does happen, which I'm pretty sure it will, you've got to look at the actors like Henry Cavill's just finished up rapping The Witcher, but there will be additional photography. You've got Gal, who's I think she's just about to have a baby or she's doing stuff with Cleopatra. You've got Jason, who's just doing Aquaman 2. You've got Ezra Miller, who might be doing the Flash movie, but that probably won't happen. And obviously all the cast needs to be available. So either one way they could do it would be shoot just to see two and three back to back. But if it's a series, if they do it as a series, then it wouldn't be as intensive. It would be kind of cheaper in a way. HBO Max really has a good formula so far. And if they can emulate the success of Game of Thrones with Justice League 2, that would be solid. So at the start of this video, I played a clip from the Light Podcast and they had Taylor as a guest on there as he's on there a lot and he's been on there a lot of times before. Now, I personally, we here at the channel, we find Taylor's information credible because generally we hear the same information as he does. And if you listen to what he says, he literally echoed what I've heard. That is why for context, I put the clips in there. I find Taylor and the guys over the, the Light Podcast very credible. So I will put the links down below. Make sure you check out the full context of the whole live stream where essentially what he says is there's going to be a big meeting soon. It may or may not already happen. And they're going to be talking about absolutely everything to do with the Restore the Snyderverse. It was good to go. I was told the same thing, but there's been a little bit of a reshuffling and now things kind of have to go through Toby as Toby's involved 
involved with HBO Max and now Zack Snyder and his team have to pitch absolutely everything again but as they said you're in the podcast there is much more metrics it's had much more success it's smashed every human possible credential every expectation there could be so the bat flexus just see two three it all has to be go through a new process and has to be pitched again which is not a bad thing as there's so much more data to back up why it's feasible why it would be cheaper to do it as series rather than movies and that kind of stuff but also something that's pretty cool is the Ansonoff article Matthew on the light podcast did briefly come on this episode and he did say the Ansonoff which she says David Ayer cut is not happening it was such a short quote that it was almost seemingly to him and now I've gone back and looked at what it said it does seem like it's a mismatch of a quote coming from nowhere they also brought up Daniel Rickman Daniel RPK who is kind of a famous Twitter scooper for some reason I don't know but Taylor went over the fact that he is now hearing the same thing that these guys have been hearing about the Ben Affleck HBO Max series that we've also been hearing about so rule of thumb is if a lot of people are hearing things from different sources about the same information generally it turns out to be true take for instance all this Tobey Maguire Andrew Garfield War Stew stuff a lot of people I'm hearing a lot of the same things from different sources about the same things exact same thing we just see two just see three the Joe Manganiello stuff the Jared Leto stuff and the Bat Affleck stuff so like I keep saying guys chill the Snyderverse is being restored don't review bomb Godzilla vs Kong because it's such a cool movie so the reason I put these clips at the start of the video is for extra context I will put creditation I'll put credits to the light podcast culture nerd and I will link it down below where you can watch the whole thing but guys listen to the people that know their stuff everything they've said pretty much to a certain degree has been true over the past year and now you've got people like Daniel RPK who for some reason is like a messiah on Twitter he says something and it's it's ran everywhere comicbook.com it's ran literally everywhere so he's hearing about the Batflex stuff now so generally if people are talking it's all true and you know when the rock is in your corner he ain't gonna back down he's been fighting for Superman to be in his movie since day one so you know what the Snyderverse will continue in some capacity it will just most likely be based on what we are hearing from multiple sources and lots of the people saying it it will be on an HBO Max based series like Game of Thrones for instance but that's not set in stone at all but restore the Snyderverse will be coming just hold on guys and be respectful on Twitter so like always guys check us out on Instagram at Wars2 if you want to see the face behind the voice check us out on Twitter at Wars2G and I will catch you in another video very soon catch you later